Yo, what's good guys, it's GM Jidal, and today we're going to be rebuilding the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets have been playing a lot better lately, so hopefully with roster updates that will make this rebuild a little bit easier. I was kind of scared to do this one all year for some reason. I don't know why. Some teams just scare me. Like, I don't know why I'm afraid of them. But the Nets, we're here. We got D'Angelo Russell playing like a boss. Spencer Dinwiddie, still a boss in my book, even though he's only an 82 in the game. So there's only one contract we really need to shed before we get right into things, and that will be... Alan Crabb, who's a 72 overall, getting paid 18.5 million. That is, woo, that is bad, okay. And for some reason, the Suns will just give me Troy Daniels if I give them a second round pick. Is that, that can't be real, right? Yogi Ferrell, too, is another dude who's not that bad, honestly. Yogi Ferrell, welcome to the Brooklyn Nets. Now we have a little too many point guards, that's okay. We can play two guard lineups. So we do have our first round pick this year. We also have the Nuggets pick. That's definitely not gonna come to fruition. They're gonna make the playoffs. We have our draft picks. The Nets have not had their draft picks in a long time. Okay, so let's just simulate this first season. If we make the playoffs, you know, we make the playoffs. I don't, I feel like with this team, I really don't know too much what I wanna do early on. I know the keepers are obviously D'Angelo Russell. Karis LeVert, he can be our starting two guard on our final team. You know, Rondé, we're gonna wanna keep these guys. I view them more as bench players. I think future starters, we have Russell, Allen, and Levert can either be our sixth man or our starting two guard. Obviously, I want to keep Dinwiddie long term. I feel like I can get him to a good contract. Joe Harris is 27, a bit older than I actually thought. All right, so yeah, we're going to extend this first season, see how things go. If we make the playoffs, you know, cool. I know my team's kind of good. If we miss the playoffs, that's fine too. I got a draft pick and a great draft class. All right, and so far, it looks like we are two and three. So hopefully, we're not going to be like the 14th pick. That's like the last thing I want. All right, we finished the year 37-45. We lost a lot of games at the end there, so I'm kind of happy we kept our pick, but I also feel like our pick won't be very good. And holy cow, the Raptors went 70-12. and 12. They're gonna win the championship for sure. Actually, we are the eighth seed, so we did make the playoffs. Very interesting. We get the privilege of going against that Raptors team, so I'm just gonna simulate the current round. I feel like there's obviously no way we're gonna beat them, no matter how much game planning I do. And yep, looks like we're on the way to getting swept. Totally fine. We did not expect to get out of the first round our first season here, so just happy to be here. Denver was the fifth seed, so their pick also is not going to be the greatest, but maybe we can snag some late round prospects who will help us win a championship, and the Raptors 17-12 didn't matter. They got swept by the Warriors. All right, so the Celtics have the number one pick in the draft. The Celtics are in a win-now mode, so maybe they will take one of our good players right now for that pick. Kind of doubt it, but you never know. All right, so I'm going to try to offer Spencer Dinwiddie my first round pick and Denver's first round pick for the first overall pick. I'm guessing they're going to say no. Okay, he says he's a championship contender, so they're not going to give me that pick. Um, I do want us to get a rookie to build around, so I'm just going to see if I can kind of trade finder for any of the top picks in this draft. Dinwiddie and Harris, and they get to take Chandler, and we have to take on Chandler Parsons' abhorrent <laughs> contract. Honestly, that's fine. I don't expect us to win the title here in year two. Giving up Dinwiddie really sucks, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like a reason this team is good is because they have two really good point guards. So if you never have a minute where you don't have a good point guard on the court, your team should be, you know, decent. Uh, Joe Harris is a bench guy. So this trade makes too much sense to me. There's gonna be a guy at the fourth pick we can snag who we're gonna be happy with, so let's do it. Darius Garland went number three. Okay, so I could still get Barrett. Although Barrett, man, watching Duke games, this dude chucks a lot, but I'm not drafting real life Chuck and Barrett. I'm drafting in the game RJ Barrett. I didn't give up my pick or the Nuggets pick, so I have more picks to make. Somehow I just completely blanked on that. All right, DeAndre Hunter is another two guard. I don't know if we should take him. Trey Jones, you know, getting another backup point guard, not the worst thing that could happen. Hmm. Seems like there's a lot of good twos around here. Yeah, it just seems like this dude's gonna be better. You know, I can make one of my twos play the three, that's fine. We can draft somebody later in the draft. And now with our Nuggets pick, we can still take Trey Jones. So all of that worrying was for nothing. Cool. So Barrett is an 80 overall to start out. Pretty good for us. Kevin Porter's a 76 to start out. And Trey Jones is 73. Okay, so, you know, these guys will help us play with some games this year. Of course, we're going to sign all of them, but not our second round pick. I'm going to extend the qualifying offer to Rondé, D'Angelo, and Alan Williams. So if we can re-sign all of these guys, that'd be great. D'Angelo is obviously priority number one. He's, you know, the main building block of the team. Now, Williams is actually only 6'8", and he plays power forward slash center. So 
Because of his height limitations, I'm not super inclined to give him a crazy contract. So I'm actually gonna dip below 30 when offering him a deal. Rondé also wants a pretty sizable contract. Don't think he's the best shooter, so I'm a little bit hesitant to give him kind of a big deal. I'll do this 11 mil per year. Uh-oh. All of these guys want to do one-year deals with me. Bad sign. Hopefully they stay steady with the big contracts I've offered them. And now, nope, all of them want to take these one-year deals. We've got some snakes in the grass. That's fine. D'Angelo, you know, we're, we're literally building a team around you, bro. But I do have 23 million in cap room now, so I'm going to try to offer, you know, a big fish, a decent contract. I'm going to offer DeAndre Jordan a one-year contract to back up Jared Allen. I doubt he accepts. Oh, he did. Okay, so now we have a really good backup center to play with. All right, Kevin Porter doesn't really have room in the rotation, so we're going to send him to the G League. Hopefully, he develops a lot down there. And so here is the rotation after sending him to the G League. D'Angelo Russell, Karis LeVert, Carroll, Allen Williams, Jared Allen. It hasn't really changed all that much if you think about it, but the bench is actually really good. We got DeAndre Jordan, RJ Barrett, a developed Napier. Man, Napier was so bad when he first got drafted. Hollis Jefferson, and that's our team. You know, that's a really good four-man bench unit, a, a relatively solid starting lineup. So I'm hoping, you know, we can get to the 43, 45 win mark. I'm a little hesitant only because we only won 37 last year, and I don't know if we got that much better, but you know, we'll see, we'll see. And we start off our season with a dub against the Sixers and the Raptors and the Celtics. Hello, and the Magic, hello. Y'all ready for us to go about four and one, and then we're, yep. I bet we're gonna be like six and four. We're gonna start losing a bunch in a second. It always just seems to happen that way. I don't know why, but maybe not. Maybe the Nets, we got some swagger. We got some magic, some Brooklyn swag. Okay. Oh man, no, we're starting to pile up the losses. You know, 13 and four all of a sudden, now 13 and five, yeah. It was com it's coming back around, but it does seem like we are a good team overall. So I'm excited about that. Cause you know, RJ Barrett's only gonna get better. D'Angelo's only gonna get better. Al's only gonna get better. All of our good players are only going to get better. So we're in a really good spot right now. All right, and finally we've been offered, I hate to trade for John Collins in every single rebuild. Cause that's annoying. Like I know in a lot of the earlier rebuilds, I was like signing the same like two guys from the Miami Heat every time. But the Hawks have now offered us John Collins for Kevin Porter Jr. Kevin Porter Jr., if you guys remember, he's our shooting garbage stash in the G League. So he doesn't even play for us. And in the meantime, we get a good power forward. This trade makes like way too much sense and they offered it to me. So I'm, I am going to take it. Okay, so now that we've done that trade, our rotation is D'Angelo Russell, RJ Barry was in the starting lineup for no reason. <laughs> Damari Carroll, John Collins, Jared Allen, the bench, the bench is really good. The bench might carry us to an even higher seed. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I, I feel confident about this bench. All right, and with that win against the Hawks, we are a 51 win team. Probably most up the strength of our bench. Remember in 2K, your bench matters a bit more in re than in real life. I think we can safely say that. So I kind of built a team that is optimized for winning in 2K. And I think it'd be a good real life team. You know, when you have a bench like that, you tend to be a good regular season team. And D'Angelo Russell made all NBA third team. Awesome, good for us. Great for us actually. And we are the three seed. So a good season for us. We should beat the Atlanta Hawks. We just beat them at the end of the regular season. We're up one nothing. We are up one one. Oh, we're not even up anymore. We're up two one. Okay, come on. Let's just, let's get this first round dub. Or, or it'll be a tough series, you know, okay. All right, we're up three two. Come on, please win game six. Don't, okay, now we're going against the Raptors again, so once again, we're probably gonna get swept. Their team is still absolutely amazing, and ours is, uh, ours is also pretty good. They went, they go up 1-0, but they only won one more game than us during the regular season, so we should put up a fight. Back home in Brooklyn for game three, we take it. Can we take game four and not up the series? We cannot. And we lose in five. Okay, well, I didn't think we were gonna really be a title team this second year. I'm very pleasantly surprised with how good we did. So hopefully next year, maybe we push high 50, 60 wins. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. And the Raptors sweep the Nuggets. Now, obviously we don't own anyone's picks. So we have the 27th pick in the draft. Probably won't do us too much good, but let's see. Maybe we could draft somebody. Maybe we could get somebody who could turn this franchise. Well, I don't really want to be turned around anymore. We've been doing, we've been doing good here earlier in this rebuild. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like we've been successful. So the 27th pick in the draft, Jalen Smith. I feel like I've drafted him before. I feel like I've drafted all of these guys before. I'm gonna go J. We've almost done all 30 teams, guys. We've almost rebuilt all 30 teams. I wasn't successful in all 30, but 
you know, in a good amount I was. Okay, so we got Jalen Smith. Let's see what his rating is. 74, and everyone after him was worse than 74, it seems. So, fantastic pick by me. So, we actually have a ton of guys who are free agents. Like, an absolute ton. So, this offseason is going to be a make-or-break offseason pretty much for us. All right, so of course we're gonna take the D'Angelo Russell five-year deal. We also need to offer one to Karis LeVert, a smaller deal because, you know, he's an 83, he's, you know, he's, he is what he is. Once again, Alan Williams, you are getting the flat contract offer because you're so short. Russell's accepted, Karis is accepted, Alan is accepted, Shabazz is accepted, Joe Harris, I'm bringing him back to play backup three for us, has accepted. And we're gonna renounce the rights to Rondé and Trevor because yeah, they're not gonna sign with us probably. Okay, so we have 16 million in cap room. We could try to go for a backup center again, maybe bring DeAndre back. That seemed to work out for our record really well. I'm gonna offer Harry Giles a big contract to be our backup center. Hopefully he takes it. Because if we had a really good backup center, that would actually be pretty lit. And he'll be young, he'll develop with our boy, Jared Allen. So, you know, he's not quite as good as DeAndre at the moment, but he'll be better than DeAndre at some point. Player progression's looking good. A lot of green arrows. D'Angelo's up to an 87, 85. Jared Allen's been progressing a little bit slower than I want. Barrett's there. He's better than Levert now. So, yeah, this is still a really good team, really good deep team. We still don't really have our, like, overwhelming superstar, I feel like, because D'Angelo's only an 87. He needs to get to, like, 93, 94 before I really think he's like, you know, the, the ultimate superstar we're building around, but we're in a good position right now, in my opinion, for sure. All right, here in year three, the rotation, D'Angelo Russell, RJ Barrett, Joe Harris, John Collins, Jarrett Allen, and the bench, we got Karis LeVert, our sixth man, that's a great sixth man, Allen Williams, Harry Giles, Shabazz Napier, and Carroll all getting minutes. So again, if this team won 51 last year, I would expect better this year, but knowing 2K, we're probably gonna do worse. <laughs> All right, we're gonna re-sign Ro Ro Rodines Kurkos. Kur you know what, we're gonna re-sign this guy. I'm not gonna try to, to say his name and insult him by saying his name completely wrong. He's a 23-year-old small forward who's been developing on our bench this whole time. You know, sometimes GM Jidel lucks into things. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I get lucky. All right, we had a 62-win season. Actually, really incredible. Yet, yeah, James Harden still won MVP. Override! Actually, never mind. I was gonna give it to Russell, but he's not even in the, not even in the top 20 of scoring. He's 21st. So never mind. James Harden, keep your MVP. We're not gonna cheat your system. We also did not have an all NBA first teamer, nor a second teamer, nor a third teamer. So even though we were 62 and 20, you know, we were killing it. Number one seed in our conference. We ain't getting the love, the respect we deserve. And again, if we win the first round and the Raptors win, we have to go against them again, which is a little scary because they beat us the last two years. But this year we're 62 and 20. Pretty good scoring balance from our team. Russell, almost 20 a game. Barrett, about 17. Levert, our six man. I'm happy with what I'm seeing here. Good shooting percentages across the board. Good three point percentages other than Collins, but you know, it's not really his role. So I'm happy with that. So they're 40 and 42, we're 62 and 20. I'm gonna simulate the current round and just hope 2K doesn't screw me. <laughs> I don't really wanna have to go game by game here. Look, somehow we are up only 2-1 and not 3-0, oh, 2-2. Guys, we might lose in the first round to this Orlando Magic team, but we don't. And the Raptors got swept by the Bucks, so I don't know if I should fear the Bucks or be extremely happy that our Kryptonite team was eliminated early because we go up 1-0. Up 2 nothing. Okay, we're already doing better against Milwaukee than we were against the Orlando Magic. And, oh, we don't get the clean sweep. We don't even get the gentleman's sweep. But we do go to the conference finals, and we're going against the Celtics. And then the other side of the bracket, the Rockets made it, 53-29, and 29, and the 41-41 and 41 Mavericks made it. So I think if we can get past the Celtics team, low key, we could win the championship. I would. In all honesty, this team, which I do think is a really great, well-rounded team, it's definitely more of a regular season team. It's so much depth, not enough, you know, just that go-to bucket getter. But I guess if you really are this deep, maybe you could do it, you know? Other teams without stars, really, the Pistons team, probably better defensive team than my team here. Not probably, definitely. But here we go, we're up 1-0 against the Celtics. Tied 1-1. I really don't want to lose in the conference finals because I feel like, you know, if we don't get it this year, what if we just don't get it again? And it's tied going into game five. We win game five. They just can't seem to get a lead on us. All right, it goes to a game seven. 
Really hope we don't choke this game seven. That Rockets team had like 53 regular season wins. That makes me think we're a much better team than them. In Brooklyn, on a game seven, it's a back and forth game. Oh, it looks like we've taken a lead. Looks like we've taken a big lead at this point. And we're going to the NBA Finals, okay. So now we're going against the Rockets. Let's see how much their team has changed. Chris Paul is an 88, 98 Harden. And then, you know, Clint is scary. But we do have Jared Allen who blocked James Harden the other day in real life. I think we match up well with this Rockets team, even though they do definitely have the best player in the series. So let's see how this goes. Game one goes to them. Game two goes to us. Game three goes to us. Game four goes to us. Game five goes to them. Game six goes to them. Oh my god, going to game seven. Okay, this is scary. We're the home team though. You know, usually home teams don't lose game sevens. That is pretty rare. And it looks like we dominated that second quarter to the point where I don't see them coming back here. We've won the championship. Brooklyn Nets winning the championship. I definitely didn't think we were going to do it here in year three. I even was thinking long term by signing Giles over DeAndre. If I, if I knew I was going for the title this year, I probably would have signed Giles, to be honest. It's so funny how it all works out like that. I mean, it's a really good team without a doubt. If you think about it, like high 80s, we have four high 80s. Those are like pretty all-star players. So this is a four all-star team plus one coming off the bench, basically. I just wish the 2K Sim Engine would value star player more in the playoffs. Like almost if the Sim Engine kind of changed what it valued in the teams. Because I'm ha obviously I'm happy I won the championship, but I've kind of learned the ways you can game the system in the Sim Engine. So nonetheless, though, fun rebuild. Guys, we don't have that many teams left. There's only about three or four teams we haven't rebuilt after this Nets rebuild. I think the Pacers are one of them. So I think I'll be rebuilding the Indiana Pacers with TD Presents. Let me know if you guys would want to see that. Comment your thoughts on this Nets rebuild below. Subscribe if you haven't, and peace.